Robert Lynn's historic The Black Lady Theater is now taking bookings. Host your next birthday party, concert, networking event, baby or bridal shower, wedding, art show, gala, corporate event, live stage play, audition, and so much more at the one and only The Black Lady Theater. Mention code GODCAST for 15% off your rental fee. Code good for the first time customers only. Valid for a limited time. Call 718-771-0900 to book your event today. Today is Wednesday, September 18th. Happy <laughs> born day to me. Make it today's now. Knowledge build destroy all being born to born. That's right. Use your knowledge to build on positive and destroy the negative and make your knowledge born. Hey. <laughs> Jamal, God free. Montana 300. That's right. We have a special guest today, ladies and gentlemen. Shouts out to the United Mean staff. Uh, yeah! yeah. yeah. The United <laughs> Mean in the house. Shout out to my man Nikki P in the house. Shouts out to our live audience. Uh huh. Yes. And we have a special guest today, hailing all the way from the Windy City. Of my hometown. Okay. Chicago. Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, Montana 300. From the crib, as we say. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From the crib. <laughs> How are you, brother? I'm all good, man. Living Glad life. to have you here, man. Appreciate y'all for having me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What uh, brings you to the NYC? Man, um, pushing my album, promoting my album, my music. You know, um, album called uh, Views from the General's Helmet. So I'm on the press run, just, uh, you know, reaching out getting all the blogs and the site and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, pushing, grinding, you know, independently, you know what I'm saying? I love that title. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. And I love the title of most of your albums, but right. Views from a General's Helmet, hmm. what, what, what made you name it that? Um, really, I felt like, um, you know, to be a general, you know, you've you got a different outlook on things, you know, also a general is a leader, you know, so everybody can't, relate or understand his views, mm. but usually they're the wisest ones. You see what I'm saying? Right. And I bought the whole helmet in. I was actually playing a video game. Um, Which one? Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay. Mm. And they have uh, all the Spartan helmets and all that type of stuff. So I was just thinking about uh, how underappreciated the helmet of the general is. Like it protects the mind, protects the brain. Mm. This brain is more valuable than all the others around it. Bucket. You see what I'm saying? A helmet is a brain bucket. Exactly. And <laughs> it has all the scrapes, you know, the cuts, things like that. But it's like it's, it saved this man's life so many right. times. So the one that probably is the closest to his brain or who can relate to it is almost the helmet mm. because it's spending the most time on it. But at the same time, uh, you, don't, you don't get to see what's coming, the vi vision from my helmet because this is the general's helmet. You see what I'm saying? So uh, just, just I always felt like I was a leader in life and things like that, you know, never been a follower. And um, I have a lot of people that, you know, look up to me and um, look to me to uplift them and things like that sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So um, I just had to go with that title. I felt like it was very original too. So okay. I just want to really back it up real quick because here at the Godcast, you know, a lot of people that watch this are, you know, people from the golden era of hip hop, you know what I mean? Right. So they might not necessarily be familiar mm. with your origins and things of that nature. So why don't you tell the people a little bit about who is Montana 300, how you got started, a little bit about your background. Uh, and you know, I think uh, 
you know, food for thought is important raising a kid or anybody, you know, the things that you take in or you witness and see. So my love for music really started uh, probably when I was around like three or four with mm. the movie The Five Heartbeats. And that's my that's, favorite movie in the world to yo, this day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's so, uh, one of my favorite movies. That, yes. that is my favorite. And it's crazy because uh, when I was young, you know, when you're a kid, four years old, it's a lot of life you still don't understand and have to learn. So the things that might take your attention is all oh, the singing, the songs, the fights, you know what I'm saying? All those things, that's, that's what you were paying attention to as a kid. The dialogue, you don't really care too much about as a kid. So as I got older, um, other things started meaning more to me, watching a movie. You know, I'm picking up on other things. So the dialogue is meaning more now that, now that I'm older, you know what I'm saying? And I think... Um, in like 2013, it was the worst year of my life. You know, uh, trying to make it with music, things like that. I'm getting in trouble. I'm facing nine years in jail. You know, um, you know, lost a couple of close people to me. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Financially, I'm, I'm messed up. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. And I remember my mom always telling me, stop rapping about, you know, the clothes and the, you know what I'm saying? The, the jewelry and the cars and the women and things like that, because at that time, I was hustling, you know what I'm saying? I was selling pounds of weed, and that's how I was funding my music, you see what I'm saying? And in 2013, it's like, I got in trouble. Mm. So it's like, you can't be moving around how you just was. You got to sit still, you got to be cautious, right. you know what I'm saying? Things like that. So um, just a lot of bad luck that year. And I remember at the last uh, speech on the Five Heartbeats, when they went to get their awards, and they was older, uh, Duck, after he seen, followed his girl, his fiance, and seen that she went to go meet with his brother at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And when he was following her, he heard Eddie, uh, Eddie Kane that got gunned down in the liquor store. Right. So that's more bad news for him. And then at the ceremony, he says, you know, uh, uh, a critic wrote one day that he said, one day Donald Duck Matthews is going to become a great writer one day once he suffers more. Right. And he said, I didn't know what he meant by that, and now I do. And it was like, that was that point of my life. Mm. Because my mom always said, you know, rap about, you know, your pain and the, the real stuff you have been through. Ooh, and, I, and I always planned to, but I would, I would tell her this. I said, mom, I'm going to one day, but now is not the time. The way that these people work, I said, I'm just a stranger to them. If, if you sit on a bus stop and a stranger comes sit next to you and say, hey, man, when I was younger, my mom was smoking crack. And my dad was a heavy drinker. And I lost my friend this age. People would look at you and say, OK, who the fuck is you? Like, my mom did drugs too, or whatever. You know, they don't care. But when it's like, oh, this is Lil Wayne, and his, his mom smoked crack just like mine. Now, now, now that means something to you. Even though it's the same fucking story, they don't care about it when it's from a stranger. You know what I'm saying? So once they see you could get down or like, oh, this nigga know how to rap, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think it depends how the stranger presents it to him too. And, and I actually, say it again. I think it depends on how the stranger presents that story. Yes, yes, to it, it does too. Um, I'm from Chicago. It's a lot of big hate too, mind you. Um, but that's not my, because some people can't get. Some people don't know how to say one thing and make that mean three and four different things. Like that's that's a, a lot of rappers can't do that. You know what I'm saying? When when that's happening, that's like super special, and that's the type of rapper that I am. So when I might talk rap about teaching and stuff and my main fan base might be like we want to hear you do some of that stuff that's hard to do because even a bum on the street can talk about pain you know what i'm saying and a bum on the street can give you the best advice you ever got in your life and you ignore it just because he looks like a bum so everybody what what has everybody that's human experience we all experience pain we all experience loss so we can all talk about that everybody can't go make one line mean two and three and four different things that's when your brain is almost working on a different level you see what i'm saying so I told my mom, I said, I'm going to do that one day, but now is not the time. And in 2013, when I went through that, I felt like it was that time now. You know, I had enough fan base momentum going. It was just like I went through so much. It's like I got to give y'all me. I got to show y'all what makes me human. Stop rapping on that outside shell of, you know, the cars, the clothes, the jewelry. I got to show y'all, like I said, what and makes me human. And that's when it worked for you. And that's, and that's what I did. I, I opened up a little bit more. So people said, like, oh, this song is different. It was a song called Game of Pain. Like, I never really heard you rap like this. That's the first time I even spoke on my mom 
doing crack. I remember coming home back from the stove to my mama smoking crack on the stove. Back then we was lacking the dough. Never would have thought one day I'd be bagging up O's, mm -hmm. packing the poles, standing on the ad with the I folks, you know, shit like that. And it's like, so that, it was kind of like a, a, a it kind of shifted a little bit for me, for the good. And then the song that blew me up, Nicki Minaj came on a song called Chirac. So I came out with a song, a remix to it a month later. And everybody was dropping remixes to it. Yeah, so when I, I came out with did her. Yeah, and after I, she was the first one to drop the remix yeah, to it. Yeah, she dropped the it. The next day, the or like day. eight like, hours later. So I think like the same <laughs> day. Yeah, yeah, like eight hours later. So I dropped mine exactly a month later. And mine, I bet like, everybody had remixes. The Game, Dirk, Cassie, Hope, everybody, you know. So I dropped mine a, a month later, and I'm just watching my views just flying like never before. Like I'm going viral for the first time in my life, you know. And one of the lines I said on there, which was hard felt and like, a, it was a very aggressive track. So it was super hard, super gangster. But I put a, a line in it that was real, uh, like hard felt to me and sentimental to me. And I said, uh, I remember way back when we was broke, we was crying mama high as hell. To us, she was a loving mother, but to other motherfuckers, she was clientele. Oh, I heard that and line I remember, too, that old, that yeah. was some and then I said, shit. And then I remember begging her to stop. And every single night when I told her that, I'm gonna get big and buy a bunch of guns and kill every nigga that and sold oh a crack. God. It's almost Man. 20 years later now. She finally sober, but that was the shit that I prayed about. I thank God I made it out. Damn, it feels good to go pick up my mama and take her out. You know, things like that. And by be sprinkling that in my crab. When I heard that, you know, when I heard those lines, I said, okay, this dude is not just your regular young boy, gangster, fucking like. He's yo, got yo, something no, nothing, about yeah. him. Yeah. Like there's, yes. a, there's, there's a lot yeah. of lyricism in, in Chicago that I don't think you guys get enough credit for. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, everybody knows about Kanye and mm -hmm. Common, but the younger generation, like, I, I think y'all get a bad rap just as far as like, you know, the street sense mm -hmm. and everything else. But yo, uh, Herbo back in the Faso land with the, him and Bibby and, and even, you know, a couple of them I know deceased, like L.A. Capone, mm -hmm. that, that, like he's hard, right. young pappy, like, right, yeah. like this, a, I like him. you I know like what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of spitting mm -hmm. going on amongst like your generation that I don't think my generation is really aware of. They right, just right. think everything is gang gang, right, but right. they don't know, like y'all busting, like right. a lot of old, I get old soul. When yeah. I hear a lot of the you know, drill rap, I, I like I like Pappy a lot because I feel like he had uh, balance. Yeah. You know, um, and like he could talk about the street shit, he could talk about his pain mm -hmm. also, but also he could be he could sprinkle his creativity mm -hmm. in there to where oh this means one or two different things. You yeah. know, and I feel like a lot of Chicago or people that want to throw under that drill thing, like drill doesn't have to have a metaphor, it doesn't have to, you know, what I'm saying have that. Like you could literally be 14 years old and successfully make a drill song because you talked about cooking up something, blowing down an op, blah blah. blah. So that's that. I don't like to really be put in that category at I all. Was say, right. you know what what is drill music? For it's somebody like, that you know doesn't like. It's, know. it's it's really like um, you know you got trap music. Like right. okay, you got trap music. You kind of might think of Ti. You know what I'm saying when you think of trap music. Okay, trapping, hustling the streets, blah blah. Drill is basically like the gangster trap. To right. where it's like. Yeah. It's more so uh, kill your like violence. Like, and we're yeah. talking about drilling yeah, 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 bullets. Like drilling yeah, yeah, yeah. drilling yeah, yeah. is like, yeah, like yeah, getting yeah. shot. So, <laughs> so, and then the the pace of it was oh, more oh, so yeah. more simplistic. I'm asking for the people that know. It, it, it's know. more simplistic than trap music, to where it's like you might just find you a little rhythm to go to, and you just ride that rhythm the whole time. To where like uh, Chief Keith was. Bitches love so, 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 mm -hmm. and I do that the whole song. Right. So it's real simple. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be versatile. I'm switching up the, I got right. wordplay crazy all in there. No, no, it's just, you know, so it's kind of simplistic, basically, right. I, I, I would like to call it. People don't know, it's still art and simplicity. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But at the same time, like I said, a 14 year old can successfully make drill music. Little mouse. <laughs> going off of his, what he sees every day, you know? Mm -hmm. Cooking up this in a pot, cooking a crack. Uh, loading a gun, finding the ops, rolling up on them, boom. That's a fucking hit in Chicago. That, and that's what was going on for so many years in Chicago with the drill wave. And then you got somebody who, like me that emerged during this time. So people were saying, oh man, there's some new drill rapper, this nigga, he's different. You know, he, and it's like, I don't like to be called a drill rapper because what I feel do like, you like. What, what do you see yourself as? 
I really, I really don't even like to be called a rapper, honestly. You MC. know what I'm saying? MC. You know, that's fine. I respect that. You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of people don't know. You know what I'm saying? The, you know, the master ceremony. You know there what I'm saying? There you go. Things there you like go. that. Master. And, and it's like, yeah. Even when I was, even when I was in jail a few times, I, I stayed so much to myself. You know, just observing everything. But when I did speak, I could be speaking to you, but I noticed that everybody in the room is watching and listening. Like, oh, this nigga's speaking right now. And then everybody always said, man, you ain't nothing like how I thought you was. Oh, it's you know, called man, magnetic. You know, things like that. Certain people things. have mag magnetic. Right. Magnetism. When they speak, mm -hmm. people listen. Right. When, when they come into the room, suddenly everybody's around them. People right. is just yeah. gravitate to them, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Facts. Let me, facts. So let me ask you something. Hold on, let me finish. Let me oh, finish oh, go ahead, go ahead. Whoa. Another thing, five heartbeats. <laughs> five heart <laughs> Sorry about that, bro. Five heart <laughs> <laughs> he said, you all right? Yeah. Your nose bleed. No, <laughs> He's notorious for cutting folks off. You know, we, we got to yeah, keep them in line. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. But, um, yeah, so the five heartbeats, I feel like that played a big thing as far as sparking my interest. Um, and I could also write R&B very, very good. Nice. I'm not the best singer in the world, but I could write... If I needed to write a song for Beyonce a thousand times, I could do that shit. No, you got a song that I was like, mm, wife and you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm about. That, so that's how, a lot of people don't know that the same person made Wife and You is the same person made Chirac. They so much opposite songs, mm. but Wife and You is my biggest song. You know, it's maybe the most money out of everything. And it's like, I like that record. It's, it's, it's my, my brother friend told me, like, yeah, some people I heard hating. I'm like, do y'all like that song, Wife and You? And they're like, yeah. Like, Nigga, that's the same nigga that made Chirac. They're like, oh, yeah. You know, just certain things like that. And some people like they know that song but don't know my face. Mm. Like I love that song. My daughter like, had not... it on repeat. That's that's right. how I actually became familiar with you because right. she had it on repeat and then eventually like now I'm list now I'm right, clicking right. on it for myself. It. I'm like, okay. Much love to your daughter. Did so may I ask? No. What? Uh, <laughs> insert. <laughs> insert. Okay. May I insert? <laughs> yes. Um <laughs> So what is the significance of May twentieth to you? Um May 20th, I was supposed to originally drop an album of mine called Fire in the Church on May 6th. And at the time, I was um, talking to a few uh, distributors about you know, doing distribution for it. And at the time, my fan base was <laughs> blowing up all my comments saying, it's this new song out called Panda, please do a remix to it, please do a remix to it. And they begging me you know, to do that. So while I'm in these different meetings with these distributors, um, kind of indecisive about who I'm going to let distribute it for me, you know? And um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to push it back two weeks. Okay. Two weeks from the 6th is May 20th. But since I decided I'm going to push it back, I'm going to give y'all what y'all want. I'm going to kill this Panda remix for y'all. Mm. And I think it hit like a million views in like a day and a half. Mm. And, um, and I think my has the most viewed Panda remix. All my remixes are really like that. If I drop a remix, yeah. Whoever famous, or whatever famous dope, was, like, uh, my I, I like the I like the you. middle child remix. Oh, like that? Too. oh yeah, that was dope. That was. I got linked up with Brother Polite off that man. He said, what? He said Brother, Brother Polite. Yeah. Oh, Polite. That's yeah, he Polite. Said, he sent me man. He said man. He said that wasn't fair. Polite. With you Cole. Brother Polite. Well, it's Polite. <laughs> hip hop fun fact: May twentieth is actually Busta Rhymes' birthday. It is. Have you heard my song Busta Rhymes? And it's and it's. You hear my song Buster Rhymes? I hear that one. Oh yes, I did. Yeah, I yeah, see. I, I see the video. Check it out. That was, yeah, was dope. Did, did you know that? Oh, and that was no, dope. That. You, the way he took some certain patterns out of right, that, right, that was yeah. dope. Um, I, I gotta check that one out. Yeah, big um, homage to him, man. And also my grandfather's birthday too. Hey, that's dope. Yeah, no, a lot right. of, lot of two days. Some, my, my, my anniversary is two days before that. But anyway, did you cut her um, off again? No, he cut me off. Oh, yeah. I want to know, <laughs> but the this album dropped. The album dropped May twentieth, yes. uh -huh. and, and in hours it was the number two hip hop album in the country, next to Drake's views, Whoa. and that's without no, no radio play, no record label behind me, no famous shout outs, all of my lyricism, <laughs> and people. Push in yeah. Yeah. So, Give it up. Power to the people. Give so you felt like, like so that was special for me. Right. Yeah. So if it ain't broke. Right. We don't fix and it. And then I thought about this mechanism. I feel like, you know, we always hear our artists or we have them artists that we're looking forward to hearing. Like, oh, when Jay-Z going to drop a new CD? Or when this person going to drop a new CD? And it's like you're waiting on that date. But I said, maybe since I don't have all this help from a major record label and I'm choosing to stay independent, which is the hard route, how about I create my own Christmas? Mm. Everybody know it's going to, on December 25th, yeah. there will be presents waiting for them underneath the tree. So whoever is living <laughs> their life and doing whatever they do, oh, it's May. You know what happens in May. 
Montana dropped an album on May 20th. So even if Montana dropped the album four months ago or two months ago, he promised us an album every day this year on May 20th. Let me get in tune with my man and see what he got going on. That's so it's like that's, that's like my promise to you. And also at the same time, it's like, um, like look how big Christmas got. Imagine whenever the first Christmas was. Like look what it turned into after these years. But so it's, it's a like way I'm to building, make them keep coming back exactly. to keep like checking for you, day even if you don't day. put nothing out for a whole you know, year. I might be dead one day, and that might be Montana 300 Day, May 20th, or some shit like that. Yo. Somebody might watch this video, and that's, that's the first time I ever said that shit. I just thought of that right now, but yeah, that's, that's why that's a big day for me. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. I see what you did there. You got any, any, any questions? questions? For our guests? I'm just proud because it's Chicago, man. Yeah. Chicago, Chicago. <laughs> always Appreciate happy it, with that. With Twister, you have like Twister from Chicago. So ask him some Chicago shit Chica so that what, we wouldn't I, know. That you wouldn't know. What is your favorite hot dog? <laughs> what your part, favorite Coney Island? Don't they call them Coney Island? Yeah, Southside. Right there, what, that's what, the Dunbar High School. Dunbar. Okay. This nice. project's called the PC. They tore them down now, but it's, yeah, they tore yeah. down a lot of projects yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Greeny Green's gone. Robert Taylor. I was there before. It got turned tore down. They got all that. I think all. projects all over the world got tore down, no? Oh, yeah, I pretty much. So. But we had, much. we had a lot. We had like a lot, a lot. A lot. Well, I'm from, I'm from Newark, New Jersey, nicknamed Brick City. Uh -huh. Like, the whole city was projects. That's why, that's yeah. why I got called Brick And then they knocked Brick that down. City. And then they knocked it down. And, and leveled it. And then whites are walking with dogs. and. Only downtown, though. See, the beautiful thing, the the beautiful thing about my neighborhood dogs. being gentrified is right after downtown, right two blocks away from the hockey stadium is Martin Luther King Boulevard. And they're not going past that block. That's right so, there. you know, the gentrification the is literally in a, top, is in a two block radius. Damn! The right where to put them niggas, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's like, all in, red In line fact, and we shit. gentrified them. Like, y'all got one little space to run around, rock yeah. out. Don't wow. come past um, MLK Boulevard. So, so let me before we get out of here, like, I just want to ask you real quick about Chicago. Like, what's the what's the climate like? First of all, is it is it everything that they say it is? Is it you know what I mean? You talking about literally, or are you talking about just that whole bad name atmosphere? Yeah, is it is it is it is it propaganda? Is it is it's it? It's like this. You know, that's the home of the gangbanging, mm -hmm. and you know, so. It's plenty of years behind things. So basically, you know how Tupac said it'll never be peace. What's really going on there is just like, imagine there's a basketball game, an East and West All-Star game, and there's in the fourth quarter. I mean, there's it's, it's no end to the game. It's just, you're trying to score, we're trying to score. Right. I kill one of yours, you want to kill two of mine. I kill, it's like, just you know, tied and up then and babies it. is being born, so they're being brought up right into it. So right. this baby might be like, oh, I'm eight years old, Shit, a, a BD killed my 28-year-old uncle. That was the closest thing to a father figure I knew, so I hate BDs now. I got to get me one. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's, it's the, that's the big cycle. Of, and, it, and it really just starts with the older people, you know, whether they uh, intentionally doing it, like this what you're going to be, this what we is, or you're just not paying attention to your actions and what this kid is seeing. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. And, um, Do you see any effort from the from the OGs? Like, okay, like now. This is what I'm saying. It's out of control. I don't see it because I'm not in the middle of it no more. So I'm pretty sure it's probably happening. But the thing with it is, he, that person is outnumbered. You see what I'm saying? Even just like the rap. Like, look at all of us Chicago rappers that's rapping. Right. How many other than me is worried about teaching? Mm. But you still can be considered gang. Like some people is like. What Tupac say? It takes skill to be real, time to heal each other. Some people don't know how to rap and teach. Some people don't know how to rap, you know, something positive and still be relevant. Some people is like, are oh, you trying to rap like this? I never listen to this nigga again. Like, how can you make teaching exciting? Just like you it's make just it like cool. kids in school. We come here to teach, but it's like that teacher is our favorite teacher. Why? Because that nigga make class fun. You gotta know how to make teaching fun, or it's just gonna look. Oh, it's another nigga saying, "Put down the gun." You gotta make it where it nigga resonates in a suit saying, with people. It's another nigga in a suit saying, "I used to live on this street. I used to live on the street." Yeah, nigga, but you don't live on that street no more. You're not there no more. So what they really need is somebody to come in there saying, "I know how I feel to want to blow a motherfucker brains out." Then that's when they gonna sit up like, "Yeah." You know what I'm saying? It's like I know how. I know that you, that you don't know what's gonna happen to you on your way walking from school, getting on two buses, catching three trains, and then leaving practice at nighttime. 
and you got to do the same thing all the way back and get back up at four o'clock in the morning and get your brother to look like I know what that's like. And hope you don't get you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I know why you got the gun. Way. And I'm not saying that it's easy to fucking put it down. You know what well, I'm saying? Listen, before we get out things of here, like that. tell the people the name of the album. Uh, once again, tell them your social media, websites, all of that. Man, uh, Montana 300, my album is called Views from the General's Helmet. Um, next May 20th, I'm dropping an album called The Rap God. Um, you can uh, find me on all social medias, Montana OF300, on everything, Twitter, Instagram, all that. A lot of religious subtext in your titles, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Deep, deep. Yeah. A man of God. We Yo, love I'm, you. I'm very impressed by you, brother. I wish you much success. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate Keep that. doing what you're doing, man. And, yo, we definitely fuck with you here at the Godcast. Yeah, Thank you, sir. Man. Everybody, Montana. Shot down. Yeah. You know what I mean, Godcast? Oh, 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 wait. This is, is this the last section? segment? We'll make this the second. How about that? We can make it the second. Oh, okay. So then we we we'll, we'll be back. <laughs> Not me, Godcast. Clap it up. Clap it up.